Hello, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Lair of Centipedes for a 5,000 subscriber special. Thank you all very much for getting me to this pretty significant milestone. And to celebrate getting to 5,000 subscribers, I, okay. You are not going to ruin my introduction, my lady. To celebrate getting to 5,000 subscribers, I am deciding to start what will hopefully be a series which will be devoted to featuring various Australian spiders, not necessarily in any particular order. And the reason for that is because, let's face it, the medically significant species like redbacks and of course funnelwebs tend to get all of the attention in Australia. So the series that will be commencing with this video will be devoted to giving some attention to those utterly fascinating but sadly very overlooked spiders. First up is Idiosoma nigrum. This remarkable little spider is a species of trapdoor spider in the family Idiopidae. It is rather poorly known and even many spider enthusiasts are unlikely to have heard of this species. These spiders are endemic to southwestern Australia where they tend to inhabit semi-arid habitats such as dry woodland. Like all members of the family Idiopidae, Idiosoma nigrum is an ambush predator, residing inside a burrow and pouncing on prey that comes within range. The burrows of these spiders could only be described as works of natural art. Debris such as twigs and leaves are arranged meticulously around the burrow's entrance. These alert the spider towards the presence of any potential prey that may be crawling around outside, by picking up vibrations caused by anything wandering around on them. The first thing you or probably anyone would be likely to notice about this spider is its highly distinctive abdomen. It has a tough corrugated surface which the spider uses as a method of self-defense, plugging its burrow and obstructing the passage of any predators that may be attempting to attack the spider. It is this feature that has earned it, and some of its close relatives, the common name of shield-backed trapdoor. Sadly, this magnificent little creature, as well as most likely some of its more newly discovered relatives, are currently listed as threatened species, with habitat disturbance such as deforestation being the key threat to their survival. These spiders take a number of years to reach sexual maturity, and they do not have a very large number of offspring, meaning it takes a long time for them to recover from population loss. Not only that, but due to their highly sedentary lifestyle, they cannot disperse very well at all, greatly limiting their potential to colonize new habitats or even recolonize old ones. While few are as immediately threatened as Idiosoma nigrum, these vulnerabilities are shared by the Idiopidae family as a whole. And seeing as idiopids have been increasing in popularity among invertebrate collectors recently, I feel as though it would be prudent to end this segment with a message to my fellow enthusiasts. Going out on forays into the bush and collecting whatever exotic and interesting invertebrates you can find is certainly an enjoyable pastime, and in most cases it's pretty inconsequential as well. However, for animals like trapdoor spiders, there are definitely some things you need to bear in mind. Because of their limited dispersion, many trapdoor spider species will have a very patchy distribution, and repeated collecting trips can easily decimate a small population. When you factor in their slow growth and reproduction, then the damage done can become potentially irreversible. Because of this, I recommend that anyone who collects trapdoors and other slow-growing invertebrates such as scorpions be very careful about just how many they are collecting and to try to exercise some degree of self-control. Of course, I also suggest that any keepers who have the opportunity should get involved in captive breeding at every chance possible. And I'm sure that one of the last things that we as spider lovers would want to do is contribute to the decline of some of our favourite species from their natural habitats. Next up is Zamiatus rubifrons. Now, like Idiosoma nigrum, Zamiatus rubifrons is a mygalomorph or primitive spider. However, it belongs to a different family called the Microstigmatidae. This is quite a large spider with a body around 40 millimeters in length. 
Like all members of its genus, Samiatus rubifrons is a terrestrial burrowing species. Unlike the elaborately decorated burrow entrances of Idiosoma nigrum, the burrows of Zamiatus rubifrons are rather minimalistic in appearance, and it takes a practiced eye to even recognize them as a spider burrow. These impressive looking spiders inhabit the subtropical rainforests of southeast Queensland, where they are typically found within close proximity to creeks, most likely due to them being quite dependent on moisture. As like many burrowing spiders, most notably the funnel webs, they desiccate rather easily. In spite of its rather intimidating appearance, well, as intimidating as a spider can be, which, let's face it, isn't really saying much, Samiatus rubifrons is not considered to be a dangerous species. However, it is worth bearing in mind that they do have large fangs, which would be able to inflict a pretty painful wound. That being said, these spiders' reclusive habits and preferences to inhabit pristine, undisturbed rainforest mean that the likelihood of you running into one in your house are basically zero. In fact, even if you go out into the rainforest searching for them, encounters with these spiders are still going to be few and far between. When inside their burrows, these spiders are rather timid. However, if you were to remove one from within the sanctuary of its home, you would probably discover rather quickly that they are a pretty defensive species and will usually not hesitate to rear up in a defensive pose. In addition to this, they also possess the rare ability among spiders to create a sound. They do this by rubbing hairs on the insides of their mouthparts against one another, generating a buzzing noise. This process is known as stridulation, and has also been observed in a number of tarantula species. The spider's impressive threat pose, as well as the accompanying sounds, are both examples of a phenomenon known as diamatic behaviour, which is any action performed by an animal for the purpose of startling or maybe even scaring off a predator. Striking an intimidating pose and making loud noises both fall easily under this category. Another excellent example of diamatic behaviour is exhibited by the katydid species Acropisa reticulata, which is normally cryptically coloured, but when bothered will reveal vivid colours and patterns hidden beneath its wings. So Zamiatus rubifrons is a pretty formidable spider and it is more than willing to show it. But if you are scared of spiders, then take comfort in the fact that this is not a medically significant species in spite of its rather foreboding appearance, and encounters with these spiders are extremely sparse, hence why the majority of photos and videos I have shown here are of captive individuals. Currently only a handful of people actually own this species, but in recent months there appear to have been at least a couple of seemingly successful pairings, so here's hoping that we may be seeing some captive-born Zamiatus rubifrons in the not-so-distant future. The next spider we'll be looking at is the aptly named Scorpion-tailed spider, properly known as Arachnura higginsi. Unlike the last two spiders we looked at, Arachnura higginsi is an araniomorph, a highly diverse infraorder of spiders colloquially known as the modern spiders. They are characterised by possessing fangs that, unlike the downward pointing fangs of my gallimorphs, point inwards towards one another like a pair of pincers. Arachnura higginsi is quite widespread and common, especially towards the south of Australia. Across its wide range, it exhibits significant intraspecific variation, in other words, variation between individuals of the same species. For example, those found in Western Australia are often a dark red colour, while those on the eastern coast usually range from yellow to white. With this spider's bizarre, almost otherworldly appearance, one would be completely justified for thinking that it must live some sort of specialised and extremely unique lifestyle. That, however, would be a mistake, for Arachnura higginsi is an orb weaver, spinning roughly circular webs just like those that are such a common sight for so many people. 
Like many orb weavers, Arachnura higginsi exhibits very pronounced sexual dimorphism. The males almost look as if they could belong to a different species, completely lacking the characteristic tail that makes the female such a distinctive animal. It's easy to suspect that this spider's resemblance to a scorpion is an example of mimicry. After all, scorpions are pretty well equipped to defend themselves, and a relatively harmless spider you would think would gain a fair amount of benefit from resembling one. However, it is not always that simple. Arachnura higginsi lives a completely different lifestyle to any scorpion. As such, the two animals would be exposed to a very different set of predators, so it makes pretty much no sense for the spider to mimic the scorpion. It is more plausible that the strange appearance of these spiders helps them to resemble a dead leaf. And given many of the predators of orb weavers, such as wasps, are heavily visually oriented animals, cryptic appearance is an excellent first line of defence. So let's wrap it up with the scorpion-tailed spider, if you'll uh, pardon the pun. In spite of its rather alien appearance, like the vast majority of spiders both here in Australia and overseas, it is essentially harmless. It has tiny fangs, a mild venom, and is extremely timid and reluctant to bite. Remind me again why some people are scared of spiders? In spite of being rather common, these spiders are not seen all that often, so if you do get the chance to spot one of these amazing looking arachnids, then consider yourself very lucky. Continuing the trend of featuring araniomorph spiders that look as though they could have come from another planet, we have Arcus Lansarius. This is a rather small spider with a body length up to 8mm. However, what it lacks in size, it more than makes up for with its dazzling colour. Arcus Lansarius is perhaps the most common member of its genus, and it is found along much of the east coast of Australia. It is perhaps most common in southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales, although patches of population do occur at higher and lower latitudes. Arcus Lansarius can be readily distinguished from the other species in its genus by the presence of a pair of large yellow blotches on the dorsal surface of its abdomen. The function of these blotches is not entirely clear, although it is completely plausible that they could serve as a pair of false eyes used to scare away a potential predator. This is a defensive mechanism seen in many animal species. While the Arca species are rather closely related to the orb weavers, they differ quite drastically in their hunting habits, with the former having little to no reliance on webbing in order to capture its prey. And as the odd body shape of these spiders makes them rather cumbersome movers, chasing down prey isn't a viable option either. Instead, these animals are ambush predators, sitting motionless on a leaf or other surface, waiting for unsuspecting prey to stray within range. Then it is rapidly seized by the spider's large, powerful forelimbs, which could be considered analogous to the raptorial appendages of a mantis. While the appearance of these spiders is far from cryptic, finding them in their natural habitat is not a very easy task. They are typically nocturnal, and spend the day resting on the underside of leaves, where they are hidden from the keen eyes of predators such as birds and wasps. And since the uh, athleticism of these spiders rivals that of the funnel webs, and uh, no, that is not a compliment, running is not a viable escape option for these animals, so staying hidden is definitely the best defence. Now, like the majority of spiders, Arcus lansarius is shy, timid, and essentially harmless. Because of their rather limited and clumsy movement, these spiders are also excellent for observation, and if you are lucky enough to find one in its natural habitat, then definitely take the time to give it a closer look and marvel at its absolutely awe-inspiring appearance. Finishing off this video, we have the undescribed and utterly magnificent Tiger Huntsman. Australia is known the world over for harbouring a pretty impressive collection of large huntsman spiders, and this species from far north Queensland is perhaps the most spectacular of them all. It was first found in 2006 
by Alan and Diana Henderson, who run the Mini Beast Wildlife website, which is one of the best online resources about Australian invertebrates. And no, they're not sponsoring this video, I just felt like they deserved a shout out. It was initially thought that this spider was a member of the genus Typostola, which also includes arguably Australia's largest huntsman, Typostola barbata. However, genetic analysis has indicated that this species is unique enough to be part of a new genus. The spider shown in this image here was the very first individual of this species ever found. And by a sheer stroke of luck, it turns out to have been a gravid female, and she had a successful clutch in captivity at the Melbourne Museum. Due to the extremely limited number of individuals that have been found in the wild, their natural distribution can be difficult to approximate. However, given our current and admittedly rather limited knowledge, it seems these huntsmen are restricted to a small area in the rainforests of tropical North Queensland. As a result of the limited number of wild tiger huntsmen observed, our knowledge of their habits is rather limited. However, thankfully these spiders do very well in captivity, and being able to watch them in a captive environment up close means that we can learn a great deal about their behaviour. They are active and agile, and have been seen jumping from leaf to leaf in order to move around. This sort of behaviour suggests that these spiders would be very at home in trees, and as such it is considered most likely that their habitat in the wild is high up in the rainforest canopy. This of course would also explain why individuals of these magnificent animals are so seldom encountered. Mature male tiger huntsmen are relatively drab compared to the females. Juveniles are also fairly dull, although as they grow older their coloration will become progressively more vibrant. Unfortunately there is little more to be said about this glamorous spider, as there remains so much to be learned. Thankfully, the number of specimens under the care of Mini Beast Wildlife have been breeding quite well, so hopefully in the near future we shall be seeing some captive bred tiger huntsmen, and I for one cannot wait. Alright, and that is the end of this video. Thank you all very much for watching. If you stuck with me the entire time, then props to you for that, because I know it was a pretty long video. But that's basically it, and I also gotta thank this big girl here for behaving relatively well the whole time. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon? I don't know. What are you doing? <laughs> Gotta love Huntsman. That, I believe, is it for me, so I'll see you again very soon.